Assalamualaikum Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh guys We meet again uh, for today classes uh, Today classes is actually your lab class But for the week week 2 uh, We uh, will not teach you lab So maybe next week insyaAllah So today uh, we are still in the chapter 1 But in a part 2 okay So we are still in introduction to programming and remember the subject is the CSC 128 okay so as usual second slide welcome to Miss Nisa online classes hello guys so this is me okay this is me please remember my face okay so objective uh this objective I have been told you uh yesterday okay yesterday classes so define computer finish done Differentiate data information done. Uh, concept of variable, remember right? Variable is in memory, done. Problem analysis done. So today I will uh, continue with the still phase one, problem solving phases. Program modeling, or we call it as the algorithm. Phase two, implementation phase, coding program, testing and debugging, and maintenance, and differentiate the control structure. So I will finish all of these today classes. Okay, so we continue for the second phase. Uh, second phase we know as the program modeling or we call it as the algorithm design. So what does it mean guys? Okay, okay. So in the first point, it says that a programmer will focus on how to construct a logical solution by putting together or combining part of information obtained in phase one. So what is phase one? Phase one, yesterday I have been told you phase one is the analyst the problem when we talk about analyze the problem we should find what kind is the data what first you can analyze dulu what is the problem from problem you should put what is the data what is the process and what is the information and the last one is expected output screen how your expected output screen looks like okay so that is the first one this information will have to be captured proper order and sequence so as to produce a correct algorithm so algorithm means that we will uh we will do the step by step to solve that problem okay that is the algorithm okay so an algorithm start with input the data so remember input process output that is the sequence okay just i have been told you yesterday that is the sequence you should start from the input which is data process and out output okay so followed by manipulation of data apply the formula okay manipulation of data will uh, call it as the process and end with a displaying information to the user this is the algorithm looks like okay this is very famous guys the two way to design algorithm remember algorithm we have two way how to design the algorithm first we use the cdu code okay the pronunciation is cdu code cdu code okay bukan cdu code ke cdu code ke bukan cdu code and uh cdu code means they're using words and sentence dia macam tadi lah macam buat resepi tadi resepi bihun semalam tu step one buat jenis one dia ayat jenis ayat and the last one is flowchart using symbol of graphic yang ini kita menggunakan lucky sign okay drawing so ingat sidu code and we have the flowchart itu adalah two way how to design an algorithm ataupun kita kelar dia sebab tools of algorithms okay so algorithm design and representation algorithm this is very famous important keyword Algorithm is the sequence of steps that tell how to solve a particular problem from one step to step three step towards the solve the problem okay an algorithm must be step by step method for solving a problem okay problem suruh awak kira area of rectangle tapi algorithm pergi buat you buat selesaikan masalah a uh, circle betul ke salah salah so Ha, berhati-hatilah sebab kita dah ada problem analysis so follow je problem analysis tu tadi okay must be a well defined very important well defined clear and unambiguous unambiguous ni tahu tak unambiguous ni macam ya ke macam ni kot ha, macam tu dia macam 
was-was, unambiguous, tak clear. Ha, itu tak boleh. Bila dalam coding ni, dalam coding ke matematik ke kan, you kan favorite matematik, you kena precise, clear. Inilah dia, algoritm step by step toward to solve that problem. You kena confident, okay? And well order sequence of instructions so that there can be no doubt about what to do next. So you kena follow the uh, the order of sequence. Ordernya tadi senang saja. You kena follow apa? You kena follow ni je awak. Input, process, output. Di mana ketiga-tiga ni kita dah dapatkan dia dekat mana tadi? Dekat problem analysis. Okay. So all instruction must be able to perform. Janganlah buat benda yang tak boleh perform. Okay. Must produce a result must have a finite number of steps. Finite nama ni maksudnya uh, mesti ada pengakhirannya. Tak adalah awak buat. Okay. Satu, dua, tiga, empat. Atau buat titik, 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 titik. N. Tak ada. Okay. Tak ada. Mesti ada finite number of steps. Mesti ada full stop. Okay. Remember. So, uh, history of algorithm ni, okay, ni sejarah dia lah. Dia datang daripada Persian Muslim Mathematician Abu Abdullah Muhammad Ibn Musa Al-Khawarizmi. So, tahu kan Al-Khawarizmi adalah tokoh gemilang untuk matematik. So, sebab itu bila sebut pasal coding, dia tak akan lari dengan matematik. Okay, nanti awak buat coding full of matematik. Saya rasa awak memang terror buat-buat matematik ni. Lagi-lagi awak adalah EC, right? Group. Cost EC, confirm mathematic power. Okay, dan ni semua you boleh baca sendiri lah eh. Okay, so remember algorithm representation it represented in two ways macam saya cerita tadi. Flowchart is a graphical or symbolic representation to present step in algorithm. Kalau saya tanya tujuan saya dulu-dulu, mereka lebih menggemarkan menggunakan flowchart untuk buat algorithm. Tapi, dia terserah kepada soalan. Okay, you tak boleh pilih. Kalau soalan tu suruh buat flowchart, flowchart lah awak kena buat. Janganlah soalan suruh awak buat uh, soalan suruh flowchart, awak pergi buat studio code. Salah. Okay? So, baca betul-betul soalan. A symbol has a specific meaning containing a short description of a step. The flowchart symbol are linked together with arrow showing the process flow direction. So, nanti saya akan tunjukkan lah flowchart punya sim symbol. So, next uh, is a studio code. Consists of short English phrases used to describe the process step in algorithm. Dia menggunakan ayat English. So, normally eh. Dalam jawapan awak, normally. An algorithm start with start or begin and end with stop or end. Ini ayat-ayat dia lah. Okay, nanti saya tunjuk. Okay, ini adalah symbol in flowchart. So, awak kena ingat symbol-symbol yang ada bila soalan suruh awak buat flowchart. Kalau berkenaan dengan input or output, you kena gunakan ni. Ini segala ada parallelogram. Kalau menge, menggunakan testing if okay else if ni tiletter lah awak akan belajar benda ni. Or mm, repetition you kena gunakan diamond for the testing. Berkenaan dengan proses masuk proses adalah Formula. So, formula kena letak dalam kotak rectangle. Okay, nampak? Start, begin or end or start, uh, stop ini dia punya bentuk. Boleh jadi kadang-kadang dia bulat. Tapi sebenarnya bentuk dia yang ini eh. Lepas tu letak start. Macam tu. Okay, di present connection. Connection ni adalah bila you buat, sekarang memang you tak nampak lah nanti. Bila you belajar chapter 3, 4, you punya flowchart yang jadi panjang. Satu kusrat tak cukup. So, you kena gunakan connector. This one we known as the connector. Okay. So, ni adalah arrow showing the process flow ni. Kena wajib lah. Okay, kena wajib lah. Kena ada arrow ke atas. Ke bawah. Ke bawah, ke bawah, ke bawah. Okay, represent module ni nanti you akan belajar chapter 5 untuk fun. function. Okay, you kena ingat eh. Untuk, untuk chapter untuk chapter 2 Fokusnya awak akan banyak gunakan ni Ni dengan ni Untuk sequence control structure Okay, input process of output Okay Okay, ni adalah contoh pseudo code In pseudo code, all action are represented by word The following is example of pseudo code Mesti wajib letak start Mesti wajib letak end Okay, ni penulisan dia 
Lepas tu dia punya penulisan tu kena tengok betul-betul eh Lepas awak tulis start, you kena jarakkan sikit untuk start the first instruction Okay, tengok You kena jarakkan ke sana sikit Dia kena, kita kenal dia sebagai indentation Indentation dalam sudut kod is very famous, very important Kalau you buat macam ni eh, ada orang buat macam ni Start, dia pergi start dekat sini Input the first number Kalau you buat macam ni guys The whole answer is wrong Okay, walaupun input the first number tu betul Indentation, you tak jaga, salah So remember betul-betul, sudut kod ni leceh sikit Sudut kod ni Start Jagaklah sikit macam ni, ha, jagakkan sikit You start kat sini Nampak tak ada jarak? Ah, ni dia Indentation penting dalam sudut kod okay? So input the first number, input the second number Nampak first dia start dengan input Calculate the sum of the first number and the second number Yang ni adalah proses Disudahi dengan Disudahi dengan Output Disudahi dengan output Dan juga boleh tulis macam ni juga Okay Dia tak formula display Pun boleh hmm, Okay Ini yang simple lah Sebenarnya awak kena tulis yang detail Jadi saya tunjuk kan Okay ni contoh dia Ini contoh dia Ini adalah C the code Okay Ini Patutnya dia ada Start and And jangan lupakan Saya tertinggal Okay So ini dia Nampak ini dia punya shape for the start Letak dia arrow, arrow, letak arrow Sum sama dengan kosong Average ini kita letak dia sebagai proses Okay rectangle Read ABC Okay read ABC kita letakkan dia sebagai Parallelogram Lepas tu proses rectangle Output parallelogram and Ingat eh flow dia Input Input Proses Output Ni flow dia Untuk sedekut dengan Procat Okay ni yang simple punya lah So kita sambung balik Yang uh, semalam punya contoh Semalam kita ada buat calculate the error of rectangle kan Kita dah Result of problem definition kita dah keluarkan semalam Di mana kita dah tahu length and width Bila kita sebut data or input Data or input kita kena ask the user to enter The famous keyword uh, The famous word that we will use inside our coding is Please enter what? Please enter length, please enter width And then we do the process and then We uh, display the information Area So ini expected uh, Output screen yang kita dah buat Semalam Okay boleh tengok Yang ni saya tak gemar sangat eh Ni tolong jangan buat Awak kena gunakan macam ni Minta satu persatu More proper Okay ini adalah detail uh, Sidu code yang awak kena Buat berdasarkan uh, Kenapa kita buat expected output screen Daripada expected output screen tu lah Kita dapat kita punya Sidu code Nampak? Nampak ni? Enter a line, enter a width, the area of rectangle So kat sini kita dah tahu CD code kita apa Okay, start Okay, mesti start Mesti ada word start Lepas tu jarakkan sikit annotation dia Display Letak display Display ni maksudnya kita nak keluarkan Enter a line dekat screen Ni lah Ni dekat screen kan Enter a line ni Kita nak keluarkan Enter a line ni kat screen So kita Letak display Display enter a line Boleh jadi prompt P-R-O-M-P Prompt Pun boleh Enter a line So mesti ada Double asprostopi Haa ah, gitu Ataupun saya panggil dia sesungut word Okay and then Read line Okay read line ni Apa dia Yang kotak ni Haa ah, nampak tak Kan senang bila you dah ada expected of screen Read line tu yang kotak tu Ataupun kalau you tengok nanti dalam coding Kesa ah, Itu maksud dia Maksudnya dia akan minta Nilai tu Minta nilai tu Daripada user Dia tunggu user masukkan Okay yang kedua kalau kita tengok expected of screen Kita jumpa apa Enter a width Ada kotak right So kita buat Display Enter a width a Read width 
tampak Read with boleh Input with pun boleh Ni dia punya ayat-ayat dia Okay ni ayat-ayat dia okay Next Ada lagi tak input Kalau dua je input dua lah benda tu ha, Dia kena macam tu Habiskan dulu input Kalau ada sepuluh input sepuluh lah Enter 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 Okay kalau sekarang ada dua dua lah Okay lepas dah ni You terus masuk dalam otak awak Okay kat sini memanglah dia tunjuk information Sebelum information ada apa guys Dekat dalam sedia kod you kena tulis Iaitu you kena ada pro Proses So calculate the area of rectangle Area equal length darab width Ni proses dia So nextnya kita nak keluarkan apa kat user This one The area of rectangle Ada kotak ni kan nak keluarkan ni kan Tapi untuk information lain macam sikit Di mana awak kena tulis macam ni Display Okay sesungut dua Area of a rectangle Sesungut dua ni hanya untuk Words yang awak nak keluarkan dekat screen Ini kegunaan sesungut dua okay Lepas tu comma Area hmm, Maksudnya you nak keluarkan apa dekat user Area So dalam kotak tu Area ni mana nak dapat Ni ambil balik Nama yang depan ni Masukkan dekat dalam Ini Comma Area Okay So lepas tu ada lagi tak nak display tak ada Terus end Nampak Okay So kalau convertkan ini kepada flowchart So easy guys Benda yang sama je Start Turun bawah Okay ada orang cakap Miss kalau saya nak asing-asingkan Enter a length read length tu satu Shape boleh tak? Maksudnya buat satu boleh Kalau you nak buat sekali pun Tak ada masa Alah So kita gunakan parallelogram Okay macam ni Follow je Lepas tu turun bawah lagi Kita jumpa proses Proses letak dalam ko kotak Lepas turun bawah lagi Kita jumpa display area of rectangle area Output So And Dah habis Inilah dia detail sedia kot dan detail flow chart Ini yang awak kena hasilkan Dekat dalam jawapan awak nanti Okay guys Example yang ketiga Yang ni tak ada jawapan So jom kita buat bersama-sama Okay kita baca satu per satu Bila dapat soalan You kena tenang You baca Okay Jangan gopoh Baca satu-satu Soalan tu cakap Calculate the salary of an employee Oh soalan suruh Kira salary of an employee Dia cakap The data are hours work And hour And hourly rate Okay The salary will be calculated as hour work Multiplied by hourly rate Oh dia dah bagi dah Sangat-sangat senang So first apa yang kita kena buat Kita kena buat analyze dahulu So, problem dia apa? Calculate, keluarkan dahulu. Calculate the salary of an employee. Maksudnya dia suruh kira gaji ni. Kan? So, buat dahulu dia punya first data. Lepas tu kita ada proses. Lepas tu kita ada Information Okay so sekarang kita Kita masukkan lah dekat dalam Table kita kita masukkan dalam table kita Kita baca kat sini dia kata The data are hours work and hourly rate So maksudnya kat sini Kita boleh buat data dia Ada dua hours work And Hourly Rate So ada dua Lepas tu dia dah bagi awak formula. Macam mana awak nak tahu dia cakap ni formula. The salary will be calculated as hours work multiply by hourly rate. Dia dah cakap dah multiply. So apa yang awak perlu buat? So salary. Ha, dalam coding dia macam ni eh. Apa yang awak nak cari dia tak depan. Okay sekarang dia nak cari apa tadi? Salary. So tak salary kat depan. Lepas tu awak buat. Dia kata hours. Allah. Hours. Work Okay Times Hours Hourly Rate Macam ni So apa information dia guys Apa information dia Information dia apa Macam mana nak tahu Tengok apa yang berada kat depan Salary ha, Letak lah salary kat bawah ni ha. Dah siap Kan senang Bila kita dah Outlinekan semua masalah kita Semua benda yang kita nak Okay, lepas dah ada ni kita buatlah expected output screen. 
Senang kita nak reka kita punya apa nama si dia kot dengan flowchart tu Okay expected Output screen Easy right Okay So Untuk expected output screen kita kena fokus dekat mana saya cakap Data dan juga information So buatlah ayat Enter Okay enter and hours work Hmm, buatlah kotak Lepas tu enter And Early read Berapa hanggit Lepas tu kita kena information dia The salary Is Apa Ah ni expected output screen kita Dah boleh tak you bayangkan macam mana Rupa detail CD code awak Dah boleh bayangkan tak saya dah boleh bayangkan dah. Saya dah nampak dah saya punya sedia code dengan pucat. <laughs> okay. So jom kita buat detail sedia code dia. Very easy. Okay kita buat uh, untuk buat ni kita kena start dengan Okay kita start dengan Of course lah start. Kan. Okay lepas tu kita patah balik balik. Lepas tu expected of screen kita enter a hours work. Yang ni yang kita nak keluarkan dekat screen betul. Bila nak keluarkan kad screen, apa keyword yang kita kena buat Jarakkan sikit guys Ni jarakkan sikit Kita buat display Enter And Hours work Okay Tutup eh, tutup Lepas tu kita read apa tadi Read Hours Buat rapatkan eh Rapatkan Sila rapatkan <laughs> Kenapa kena rapatkan? Minggu depan saya ajar kenapa kita kena rapatkan words ni Okay display Enter And Ali Read Okay abaikan tulisan saya yang cantik tu Okay read uh, Ni saya buat ni Saya rapatkan Okay So kita dah siap kita punya input Lepas tu kita kena buat apa? Kita kena buat proses So proses dia saya buat direct je macam ni Salary equals hmm. Kalau saya rapat saya kena buat sama eh Tulisan kena sama Kalau H O U R S W ni besar word ni ha, Buat macam ni So darab Darab kena guna star Hourly rate Okay Dah siap proses saya Yang ketiga kita kena ada apa? Output So output dia apa guys? Kita letak display The salary is Jangan lupakan koma Apa yang awak kena letak? This one ke sini Nampak tak? Senang je Okay Lepas tu tengok sama And Dah siap dah detail sedia code saya Okay Boleh So sekarang saya nak awak So sekarang saya nak awak siapkan flowchart ni Buat eh Buat flowchart ni Send At Telegram After You Watch This video Okay, sila buat flowchart berdasarkan Sila kod yang ini Okay, saya nak tengok boleh ke tidak Okay, buat Send at telegram after you watch This video Okay So next is The phase 3 Phase 3 is the implementation phase So, kita dah ada kita punya Apa kata? Kita dah ada kita punya Perfect problem analyze Analysis Lepas tu kita dah ada modeling kan dia Menggunakan tak kisahlah gunakan studio code or flowchart So now adalah turn untuk awak buat coding Okay coding program implementation phases The purpose of this phase is to convert an algorithm to a computer program Okay there are many programming language Basic, COBOL, Pascal, Fortran So apa yang awak belajar adalah C++ di mana masa first class Uh, semalam saya dah tunjukkan software yang you kena gunakan iaitu DAPC++ Okay Each language has its own and syntax Syntax and 
rules adalah dia punya rules je nanti kita akan belajar ni baru pengenalan sahaja so inilah contoh guys yang awak kena hasilkan seram ke tidak seramkan tak apa saya akan jawab one by one insyaallah you can perform it don't worry okay i will teach you okay inilah contoh ni ini syntax dia c r c in float integer Ah, dia ada benda ni pula semicolon 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 process display see out ni output dia ok ni output dia nanti ok tengok je dulu hadamkan dulu awak hadamkan dulu hmm ini ya ini yang saya kena belajar Sam ni you akan hadap sintaks semua sintaks ni sepanjang 14 minggu serono bila you dapat hasilkan You nampak output screen tu you rasa macam satu kebanggaan bagi you Sebab ini bukan bidang awak betul tak? Tapi you boleh hasilkan wow. Sebab saya pernah ajar budak isi Terus yang lepas, Alhamdulillah perform Boleh buat sebab kenapa eh saya percaya dengan uh, student isi Sebabnya you punya math is perform Perform Okay, math awak perform insya Allah kau ni awak perform Logik awak memang TikTok budak isi, okay? So, bila kita dah settle Buat coding Okay Kita akan testing and debugging Okay, testing and debug Debug ni maksudnya kita nak test uh, Test ada error ke tak ada Okay It's the time to check error either syntax or logic error How to test the program Running the program with a set of data Debugging is the process during tracking and fixing the error Okay, itu maksudnya testing and debugging So, ini very famous guys Selalu keluar dalam final Okay, final Dan juga test Okay, you kena kenal syntax error tu apa Logic error tu apa Syntax error is occur when not apply the rule of the language Maksudnya, you tak betul apply the rule of language Contohnya, kalau Macam tadi you nampak di C in kan C in sepatutnya huruf besar You pergi buat huruf Eh C in sepatutnya huruf kecil Okay, ni bentuk dia tapi you pergi buat huruf besar. So ini dikenali sebagai syntax error. Error in rule of language. Can be traced by the compiler during compilation also called compile time error. Compiler boleh detect syntax error. Apa pula logic error? Nama pun logic guys. Error in logic of processing. Maksudnya error of logic processing ni maksudnya awak nak kira error of rectangle. Jawapan yang dia bagi adalah Area of circle. So mana salahnya? Selalunya uh, logic error ni salah dekat formula. Dia run tau. Dia run tapi dia keluar result tak apa-apa. Ha, itu kalau boleh jadi gitu, itu adalah logic error. Tengok balik your punya formula. Ataupun tengok balik your punya input data tu. And remember eh, logic error cannot be traced by the compiler. Compiler pula. <laughs> cannot be traced by compiler. Remember logic error tak boleh Uh, trace by compiler. Compiler hanya syntax error saja. Siapa nak trace? Kita lah. Macam ni kita nak tahu. After you run, the call result, result tak mengarut-ngarut. Uh, itu you kena trace sendiri. Kat mana error dia. Okay. Also called as runtime error. Okay. Documentation. Documentation tu nantilah. Macam uh, saya suruh awak hantar assignment ke apa, documentation tu Written detail description of the program cycle about the program Program tu awak buat apa Include the description of the program, is that the flow chart, studio code, data description Program list of coding, testing result and comments Dekat first class saya sebutkan You akan kena buat project So project tu awak kena documentation kan You kena ada semua benda ni Okay later saya akan letak lagi apa yang perlu ada dekat dalam Documentation of your project. Maintenance phases maksudnya is a modification made to finish the program. To finish it need to refer to the previous documentation. That's why documentation is very important when you do the maintenance phase. Okay. So design your program, a good program must have accuracy of course lah. Kalau tak accurate tak perlulah awak buat coding. Eh tak perlulah awak buat program. Reliability boleh dipercayai. Efficiency, cepat Maintainability, boleh buat maintenance Readability, orang lain baca coding awak pun dia faham Okay, tu pentingnya readability Usability, boleh diguna pakai Every algorithm and program has its control structure So now, I want to introduce you 
the three types of the control structure. What does it mean about the control structure? So let's go right into it. So what is the control structure? In a simple term, control structure is the type uh, is the type of algorithm. Algorithm to tadi apa guys? Algorithm adalah step by step to solve the pro problem. Okay, the structure could be sequence. Remember, ini sangat penting. Dia ada tiga sequence, selection, mana dia tadi? Selection and repetition. Tiga ni je awak akan belajar. Tiga ni awak akan belajar mengenai control structure. Each of these is needed for a different purpose within a program. So nanti awak akan belajar dulu pasal sequence, lepas sequence pasal selection, yang best ni pasal repetition. Ha, itu later lah belajar nanti, okay? So the purpose of the control structure is to control the execution of the statement in the program. So kita nak design dia mengikut uh, problem tu lah. Problem tu sesuai gunakan sequence ke, sesuai gunakan selection ke, sesuai gunakan repetition. Lagi naik level uh, chapter awak, lagi awak kena tahu. Ha. Kalau soalan keluar macam ni, which control structure that you should apply? Ada tu boleh campur ke tiga-tiga. Itu nanti bila dah final lah. Okay. So, an algorithm that use only the three kind of control structure. Sequential, sequence, selection, repetition. Are called structured algorithm. A structured algorithm are easy to test, modify and are also easy for other programmer to understand. Okay, ni sequence. Yang saya sebut, sebut, sebut tadi tu kan. Input, process, output. Ini adalah salah satu contoh untuk sequential control structure. Sequence. Mengikut u, rutan. Yang kedua adalah selection. Di mana dia ada bercapang. Bila selection ni, uh, dia ada buat pilihan. Alternatif. Ha, ni nanti kita akan tengok. Ha, ni dia gunakan diamond tadi. Testing. Untuk repetition adalah benda yang akan diulang. Okay, the same statement dia akan ulang. Ha, ikut dah ikut soalan tu. Nanti later saya akan ajak awak kalau soalan macam ni, which control structure you should apply. Don't worry. Saya akan tunjuk semua. Don't worry. Relax. Okay, sila relax. Jangan ha, apa aku belajar ni? Ha, ha, macam tu dan. Jangan eh, jangan. Jangan gusar. Benda ni kalau you betul-betul tengok saya punya video, offer. Udah isi semua aim. Dapat A dengan saya A plus. Okay, don't worry. Okay, so next sequence control structure saya dah cakap tadi. The most common form of control structure, basic as well as default program. Okay. Each step is carried out in order of their position and it's only done once. Okay, sekali. Daripada input, process and output. A sequence basically where the code just follow one linear path until it reach the end. From start to end. Um, uh, emphasizes on which statement has to be executed first and which statement has to be execute, executed next. Dia akan follow one by one lah. Start, lepas tu buat statement A, lepas tu statement B, statement C sampai lah. And, itu masuk sequence. Selection pula dia bercabang. Okay, bila select kita kena buat pilihan untuk soalan macam ni. A selection control structure emphasizes on making a decision or choice based on certain condition. Okay, kalau condition ni true, dia akan pergi statement ni. Kalau false, dia akan pergi statement ni. Okay. This control structure allow the program to choose between one of two or more alternative part of instruction. This set particular answer from a set of variable answer and carries out the step that proceed it. Contohnya macam ni. Yang saya cakap tadi, dia bercabang. Okay, daripada input tu, Sebelum nak pergi ke proses, dia akan input. Daripada input ni, dia ambil nil, uh, variable input tu, dia akan buat uh, testing. <coughs> Kalau true, dia pergi buat statement A. Kalau false, dia buat statement B. Dia pilih salah satu eh, dia tak ada pilih dua-dua. Dia pilih salah satu sahaja. Okay. So, kalau repetition pula, the repetition or loop, okay, nama glamour dia loop. Control structure allows a program to perform the same process repeatedly. Dia buat repetition process. Okay, based on the certain condition. This is basically where the program will repeat a set of session until it reach a certain point where an event has occurred, the condition is met. Sampailah uh, dia berhenti ulang. Contoh dia nak uh, ulang statement tu sebanyak lima kali. So, dia akan pusing sebanyak lima kali. Itu masuk dia. Okay, in a loop, you ask a question. If the answer require an action, you perform the action and ask the original question again. Kalau dia betul, 
you ask lagi you ulang lagi if the question answer require that the action be taken again you take the action and then ask the original question again ha, ni nantilah dia akan ulang kalau yes statement A ni eh kalau condition ni yes statement A dia ulang lagi dia tanya lagi yes ulang lagi sampai yang ke enam no maksudnya dia nak pusing sebanyak lima kali saha je ok dan ini yang awak akan belajar bila awak buat uh, projek nanti iaitu you kena combination of the structure daripada sequence you akan jumpa uh, repetition lepas tu you jumpa selection uh, ni nanti bila dah you dah upgrade from chapter by chapter you akan jumpa benda ni jangan terkejut ok so guys dah habis sekejap je kan ok sekejap je So dah habis chapter 1. So sebelum saya meneruskan chapter 2 minggu hadapan. So please, please, please make a revision first. Sebab contohnya macam variable semua tu kan. So make a revision first sebelum kita start minggu hadapan chapter 2. Okay. So jangan lupa kerja yang saya suruh awak buat dalam slide tadi. Dan juga saya ada bagi kerja lagi <laughs> dekat dalam Google Classroom. Kenapa Miss bagi saya kerja banyak sangat Miss? Okay dia macam ni lah guys eh. Sebabnya um, untuk saya nak tengok you faham ke tak. Saya risau sebenarnya sebab ni bukan bidang awak. Tapi saya takkan uh, Tapi saya percaya student isi boleh buat. Sebab based on my experience mengajar isi you guys memang perform. Okay. So I hope that you guys tak menghancurkan harapanku Okay, tak palsukan harapanku Okay So uh, If you have any question regarding uh, This chapter Part 2 You can ask me in telegram And so That's all done Forget to do all my works Okay Yang mana kena hantar telegram Yang mana kena hantar um, Apa nama Google Classroom uh, So Tengok betul-betul eh So uh, That's all for today So we meet again next week in chapter 2 part 1 okay so that's all guys thank you assalamualaikum bye